Well, hello and welcome to the ultimate 80s and 90s praise song bracket. I'm Tim Breen here along with Christy Conover and Justin the Jet Rocks, and we are here to reveal to you the Sweet 16. The 16 songs that define 80s and 90s praise and worship music. This competition has already been going underway here for over a week as we've had a series of play-in games from some of our lower-seeded teams as they've tried to make it here to the Sweet 16. Just a little rundown on those before we bring to you the top 16 and their final seedings as we turn the corner toward the last part of this bracket. Beginning in the opening round, there was a matchup between Great is the Lord and Love in Any Language. This was the biggest blowout of the initial round. Great is the Lord winning by 86% over Love in Any Language. The very first matchup of the tournament pitted Carmen's the Champion against I Looked Up and I Saw My Lord a Common. A bit of a closer battle, but in the end, I Looked Up prevailed at 60% to 40%. There was some thinking, I think, uh, among participants that Carmen didn't sing enough during that particular piece and that he spoke more of the words, did that hurt him? Time will tell, but it appears that I Looked Up, Alleluia, is moving on. Beneath that, in the bracket, was a matchup of contrasting styles. Give thanks with a grateful heart, and O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. And again, a fairly decisive decision in this one for how majestic is your name. That's 65% over 35% for give thanks with a grateful heart. And then the last, in the opening half of opening rounds, the last matchup, pitted Days of Elijah, that upbeat song with all those Old Testament allusions, against the song Sometimes by Step. And I think Sometimes by Step, you could jump in here if you'd like to, Christy, may have been hindered a bit by name recognition. Well, you're right, Tim. Um, first, that first matchup, Great is the Lord, they had it hands down. I really don't think anyone expected anything different from them. Um, sorry, Twyla, Love in a New Language is a fantastic uh, ministry of music song. It really is a difficult one for congregations to sing, so I think that that was one that really kind of hindered its performance there. The opening there. line is difficult. It's you true. know, the, 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 the Eastern Bloc language is not They're easily mastered. Um, and then, you know, the second matchup between I Looked Up, Alleluia, and, and The Champion, you know, I think Harmon should have had this. Um, I'm a little disappointed in his performance, but you know, that was a song that's very strong, but you're right, I think the non-singing, I with, mean, with, what was that about? Well, with, without today's video uh, accessibility within the church as we sing, mm -hmm. you can't partake in Carmen's fantastic you know, hairdo, yeah. which helps that song a lot. It's true. Um, and, and I think that that really played into it possibly in this matchup. I'm really excited to see what Carmen has next. Yeah. Yeah, but some people thought he didn't have quite enough quad one wins, and that may have factored in. That's, that's very one. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving on, how majestic is your name? Give thanks. The upbeat one one. You know. It did. Yep. It There's did. a sense that out. give thanks might be a bit too seasonal. It mm -hmm. seems to be a yeah. fall and autumn, yeah. Thanksgiving kind of song, but may not have year-round staying power. Chill comes in the air. Hey, Google, give thanks. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And finally, um, Days of Elijah versus Sometimes by Step. You know, when we sang this song in Sunday school and with the cards, none of them had Sometimes by Step in the title. It was always Step by Step. I really do think that that skewed our, our viewing audience and just didn't give it the performance that that song deserves. But, really you know, may, may, there's always next year. May have been handicapped on a technicality. We just don't know. Well, then to the bottom half of the bracket, an initial matchup between Thy Word and Sanctuary. Thy Word wins by 57% to 42%. And then in the biggest upset of the tournament, 10th seeded as the Deer, really seen coming in as a strong contender to even perhaps make the final four, was upended in a blowout by you are my all in all 68 percent to 32 percent i think that's something we're going to need to break down just as the deer did not show up to play on that day they just they never really got off the bus and participated a very disappointing day for all uh, forest creatures you know after reviewing that some more i i i, I tend to agree that that was quite a 
quite an upset. You know, we, you take a, the psalmist, David, literally, Psalm 42, almost word for word, put into as the deer. And it gets upset by you are my all in all. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how that happened. And then our final two playoff matchups pitted knowing you against Victory Chant. Another one of those contrasting styles. Victory Chant, a lot of repetition, a lot of echoing, was not able to overpower knowing you in the end. And then finally, another very strong performance in the opening round for our God is an awesome God. It's 75% over better is one day. Justin, as you look at the bottom half of the bracket, uh, what really stood out to you? What, what uh, songs really came through strong in your mind? Awesome God, uh, that was the blowout I expected. I expected to see Awesome God move on pretty strongly in that. And, and it showed an 11 to 22, you know, 11 versus 22 matchup. Yes. Well, we are soon ready to reveal those top eight seeds and the matchups they'll have with the winners of these playing rounds. But before we do that, we want to take one last look at our Bubble Watch presented by Pizza Ranch. And according to Bubble Watch Bracketology expert Suzanne Vogel, our last four in are How Beautiful by Twyla Paris, Trading My Sorrows, an interesting pick, but they did have a strong 1987 season, I believe. The Battle Belongs to the Lord, another one of those upbeat songs, really plays well with a lot of different ages. And then finally, Shout to the North, again, one of those songs that sometimes involves echoing. Shout to the North and the South, sing to the East and West, Lord of Heaven and Earth. Those are projected as our last four in by bracketologist Suzanne Vogel. And then the first four out, the first four out projected by Suzanne Vogel, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, The Heart of Worship, Make Me a Servant, and in, to my mind, a pretty big surprise, El Shaddai. She predicts those to be left out. Now, there are many songs that are waiting and watching this broadcast carefully, hoping to be chosen for the final eight at-large selections to be part of our Sweet 16 songs. We have live look-ins in both of those places. Here is a look at the Lord I Lift Your Name on high contingent uh, as they are gathered there. And then also cross-country we go to those looking in on behalf of the battle belongs to the Lord. We know there are nerves, there's anxiety, there's a lot of different dynamics going on as people await news. Did they make it in? Did the bubble burst? Or does Cinderella's slipper still fit? Well, with that, it is time for us now to reveal the top eight seeds and therefore the Sweet 16. These are the final 16 songs that you will have an opportunity to vote on via Facebook as they together pursue the golden overhead projector. Without further ado, let's begin in the Michael Card region with the 11-6 matchup. Our God is an awesome God. Again, that decisive victory over better is one day will be indeed matched up with Shout to the Lord, the number six seed. Our God is an awesome God. Shout to the Lord. That is a very, very interesting matchup. Anything could happen in that 11 and 6. I think, you know, just to interrupt here, Tim, real quickly, I think Darlene Check, a, a, a perennial Hillsong powerhouse, right? And I, I, I feel strongly about that one. I think that's going to move along. Yeah, I'm not sure about that totally. I mean, Awesome God, that is appealing to our youngest of the church. Our, our nursery school kids learn to, you know, awesome God as soon as they get put up their Emotions. muscles. The motions, motions are key. Emotions, emotions are very sure. important. And yep. so I think that that one appeals to young and old alike. That is going to have a fighting chance, I believe, Justin. Well, the, the victor in that matchup then will be paired with the winner of our 314 contest between knowing you, again, winners over victory chance, and the number three seed, Lord, I lift your name on high. So Lord, I lift your name on high does survive. They do make the field and at a strong three seed. Then it is the Cinderella, the low seed. You are my all in all. The number 23 seed makes it to the Sweet 16, and they have quite a matchup. They're going to face down with the mulleted one himself, Ray Bolts. Thank you 
for giving to the Lord. That is going to be an epic, epic clash. And then finally, the winner of the 15-18 matchup, Thy Word, moves on to take on the number two seed. And the number two seed, a lot of people were waiting to see where this would show up. Michael W. Smith's Friends Are Friends Forever. And this really rounds out the Michael Card region, the lower half of the bracket. Christy, as you take a look at these matchups, what do, what do you ask viewers to be looking for and voters to be considering as these come across their Facebook feeds? Um, what I'm really excited to see, you know, we kind of talked about the awesome God already. A shout Good. to the Lord, fabulous as well, but I do think awesome God's going to come out on top there. Um, as far as that Cinderella, you are my all in all, thank you. I got to give it to thank you. I've got to give it to Ray. He has been, you know, that is your epitome of what you want as a song. When you look back on your life, I mean, don't you think that that's something that really would speak to you? Absolutely. The, the mullet alone speaks to me, especially at that age, right? Mm -hmm. um, not any longer, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, uh, I think that Ray Bolt's mullet really is going to step up and win here. Mm -hmm. But it will be indeed thank you that matches up with you are my all in all any more thoughts christy before we move on to the final eight selections well i think the thy word versus friends are friends forever i think that that is just a perfect matchup because it's we got amy grant we got michael w smith those two they're still together to this day they both had you know wonderful 30 year plus careers going in praise these songs are essential to them, but I'm going to give it to M-Dub yeah. this time. And, and Friends Are Friends is, is really the penultimate crying song. So many storylines. Right. So many right. storylines. Right. Yep. Yep. Well, that comprises the lower half of our bracket, the Michael Card region. And now let's move up to the top half, the Jeff Moore and the Distance region. First in the 12 five matchup. It is indeed Days of Elijah, and Days and Elijah of Elijah is coming in with a head of steam. This is a very, very strong song, but matches up with Open the Eyes of My Heart Lord. So Open the Eyes of My Heart Lord as an at-large makes it in at the number five seed, a very, very strong song. And then I'm particularly interested in seeing the all-majesty matchup in the 13-4. Coming out of that playing round, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name, matches up with majesty. The 8-9 matchup, perhaps the most intriguing of this round, simply because these are two evenly matched songs. Coming out of that matchup with Karma, it is, I looked up and saw my Lord come in, Alleluia. And then one of the great songs of the 90s, Come. Now is the time to worship is in at the eight seed. Come, now is the time to worship. A lot of people I can remember that song as a worship opener. Mm -hmm. It's a camp song, and I think there's going to be a lot of support for Come, Now is the Time to Worship. And then the final pairing of the Sweet 16 matches Greatest the Lord, again coming through as a 16 seed against the over all number one seed, and that is Shine Jesus Shine. And I think a lot of people expected Shine Jesus Shine. Just a very, very strong career for Shine Jesus Shine. This means that right now there are a lot of songs who didn't make it in, right. and, and, they're, and they're doing some soul searching. In fact, let's check in uh, right now with The Battle Belongs to the Lord. Well, we're obviously disappointed in the committee's decision. We really feel like the battle belongs to the Lord, deserves to be in this tournament. You know, a lot of people talked about our strength of record, but we did take on Days of Elijah back in November on a neutral site. And you can only play who's on your schedule, Tom. We're going to give credit where credit is due, and we're going to, you know, we're going to look at the film and we're going to enjoy our time in the NIT. Friends are friends forever is not even a praise song. This is bogus. It's a difficult thing indeed to have invested so much in a song and see it not selected, but best wishes to the battle belongs to the Lord as, as they move on and, uh, and we'll sure that, we're sure that they'll be heard from uh, again. So now, uh, Justin, as you look at these, at this region, the Jeff Moore, the distance region, any potential upsets you see, what should voters and viewers be thinking about as they make their selections? You know, I'm going to say right off the top here, and I, it's going to be difficult to hear for some folks, but um, I, I, really, I really could see 
a great is the Lord upset over the number one seed. Oh, okay. I know, I know, shrine to use a shrine. But when I think about this, you know, you've got great is the Lord, uh, a perennial uh, song through the 90s. I, I, I can't even think of a time when that wasn't sung at Sunday Night Church. You know, I, I think Shine to a Shine, written by Graham Kendrick. You know, some people believe that, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, there, there are critics out there that say that, really, that it was evangelical rubbish. And, mm. and I don't know, uh, I, I think that might be strong. Oh, that, that yes, is, yeah, that's yeah. quite strong. I, I think it is strong. But Bring in the fire, there, Justin there, There's Rush. people that have said that in a hundred years, Graham Kendrick will re, be remembered as one of the greatest hymn writers. Hmm. Might be a little strong, but so I, I predict maybe an upset there in that 16 versus one seed. You know, in that next matchup, that Majesty versus How Majestic, the, the Majesties line up strongly against each other, but I, I'm going to have to give it to uh, Jack Hayford and move on to the next round. Mm. Strong yep. words, strong words, but yep. it is a four seed, so we can it expect is. a lot it of is. it. Yeah. But a good matchup. It is. Open the eyes. Uh, I'll touch briefly on open the eyes. Paul Belosh, uh, well-known writer, uh, I believe he wrote uh, Hosanna. Uh, I, I believe he wrote uh, Your Name. Your Name is a big one that he wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, still popular. So I think, you know, open the eyes, I see that moving along. So many possibilities, and, and all of us are just fascinated to see how this will play out. The golden projector is, is out there waiting to be claimed, and someone's going to walk home with this in a shining moment, and I'm really eager to see who it will be. But, Justin and Christy, it's time for your final four predictions. I know you've been working on this, you've been penning these out. I won't ask you for your ultimate victor, but who do you see making it to the final four. Justin, we'll start with you. Sure, thank you, Tim. Uh, you know, I've got a number eight seed battling and overcoming my number 16 upset to come in in my final four in that Jeff Moore in the distance region. So, so you have come now I is have the time to now. worship. Come wow. now is the time to worship a number eight seed in that final four. I also, in the right below that, I have majesty beating open the eyes of my heart. So Majesty a four seed, that'll be a great matchup. An eight versus a four. I don't know that many people saw that coming. And what about uh, your final four, or your, the bottom half of your bracket? The bottom Excuse half of my me. bracket. Yes, I apologize. You know, friends are friends is gonna, I, I really think that's gonna make a strong showing. Uh, at a two seed, I think that's a very strong showing. I, I see Michael W. Smith just forging ahead on that one. Uh, and then Lord, I lift your name at a three seed. I think that will uh, be pretty strong as well. So I've got a two and a three seed in that lower bracket moving along. Indeed, that, it, it, just just the, the Michael W. Smith, Amy Grant, that's gonna be must see Facebook. It is, must it see is, Facebook. absolutely, don't miss that. Yeah. Don't miss that. Christy, your final four. All right, well, Justin and I obviously have some differences of opinion here, but we shall see. Well, we'll see. We shall see who comes out on top here. Um, I believe that number one, Shine Jesus Shine, it's just gonna blow Great is the Lord out of the water. I mean, they are prepared. They are ready to come to any service you've ever come gone to in your life. You know, it's cross-denominational. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that that one's going to prevail and go um, into the final four. So I do have the number one mm -hmm. seed moving on there. Mm -hmm. um, the second matchup I have, I have um, opened the eyes of my heart coming in and beating Majesty. Um, in the round of eight. And so I really just think that the popularity in those late 90s years of Open the Eyes of My Heart, I mean, it was one of the first songs you can learn on the guitar. And I mean, it's sung in uh, many praise and worship chapels wow. for you know weeks on end. So I really think that that's gonna have a strong showing amongst our 30 to probably 45 aged um, Facebook users. Wow. So I really do hope that comes out and has a strong, strong response there, people. Um, and then in the bottom half of the bracket, I do agree with Justin here. Friends are friends. That is just forever. Forever. Yeah, forever. So I do think friends is going to come out there. Um, but I have it against the Ray Bolts. I do think that's a great um, matchup. M Dubs, 80s mullet is yeah. going to be Ray yeah. Bolts. It, it, yeah. It's just hard to imagine two titans going against each other in a in a bigger matchup than Michael W. Smith. And, and Ray Bolts. Yeah. I, I just don't see how Michael W. Smith can't make it into the final four. Know. And, you know, and then your final two. And my final two, I have Lord, I lift your name on high um, in the final spot in the final four, um, paired against Awesome God in the round of eight. I really think that Lord, I lift your name on high, um, it, you know, it was on the bubble to begin with, but it really came through. I really think that they have a strong 
they've got strong words. Mm -hmm. You know, people can relate to that, and Absolutely. I really think that's gonna that's gonna perform easy to learn, well easy to sing. Yeah. I mean, if you if you can't pick up that song by first time through the chorus, you know, you'll get it. Well, the twentieth time you sing it, twenty yeah. services later. Well, Justin Rux, Christy Conover, thank you so much for your contributions. Great analysis, great breakdown. You guys got a little salty on that "Great Is the Lord" yep. against "Shine yep. Jesus Shine" yep. matchup. Yep. We hope that you can, you know, mend whatever rift there is between you. But we want you to participate. Voting begins on Friday morning in the ultimate clash for the golden overhead projector. For Justin Rux, Christy Conover, I'm Tim Breen, and we will see you on the other side of the ultimate 80s and 90s praise song bracket. Have a great day.